these are five tools that as a video business runner, content creator, weekly podcaster that I use that personally, I think make my life easier. And I think personally, like if other people want to use them, we'll like link them down below in the show notes. Um, that will actually like make a big difference. Right. That's what yeah. I'm going for. So the first one, and this is kind of a no brainer, but it, it, I hate to use it cause I feel like it's so overplayed, but the number one AI tool I use chat GPT four O four O four O so good. Now the way I use it is, Probably like I don't use it to like come up with like, well, I'll use it to brainstorm a little bit, but like I mostly use it for like blasting through emails. Um, I literally will copy the email that I got, paste it into chat GPT, say, help me write a reply. I want to say X, Y, and Z, but make it sound friendly, pops it out, and then it's good to go. I make some minor little adjustments, copy, paste, send it off. Getting through emails was the slowest part of my business, almost to a point where I was going to like, have to find somebody. I didn't know I was going to afford it, but I had to find somebody to help me with emails because I was so bad at it. Mm-hmm. But now I feel like I've gotten much better at emails when I have the time, and ChatGPT helps me out that over. Like I'm 100% better because I use ChatGPT. That's on my list too, and it is integrated into almost – it touches almost everything that I do. Yeah, absolutely. So that's that's a that's a big one. Um, the next one is actually a new AI tool that I found that helps me out with like YouTube specifically. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's called Taja, A-I, T-A-J-A. And literally you upload your video to YouTube and then you copy your link, you send it in there, and then it analyzes your video and like helps you with like tags, gives you like chapter markers. Uh, Are you giving these crazy golden nuggets? <laughs> Dude, that's wild, bro. <laughs> like this this tool. I've never heard of that. Yeah, I use this tool on a regular basis and like it helps me out a ton. A ton. Wow. Yeah. It's AI? It's AI. Most of the tools I'm using right now, like I've been testing so many AI tools for this exact reason. Um, Seriously, guys, uh, this may seem like this is a planned thing. This was not a planned thing. I cannot tell you how many things that Brandon has told me that I'm like, let me look that up. <laughs> and then I instantly start using in my video business to make more money or to sell as a feature to clients. So game. All right. The next one is uh, I'm trying to figure out. I feel bad because I feel like they're all AI tools. Hey, is that okay? Hey, I don't you're go we're going for impact. I don't really care if Okay. Yeah. All right, because they're they are. They're, all, yeah, they're yeah. pretty much all AI tools. Yeah. The the next one that I've been using, um, is actually like, I don't know. I don't know how to really structure like where it falls in my lineup. But like, so some of you guys who watch this show, if you're watching live right now, um, you'll know that we have two channels, right? Mm-hmm. We have this channel, uh, my main YouTube channel where we go live. And then we have a secondary YouTube channel where we post clips from this live stream. Um, so if you're watching this as a clip, you're probably on that channel, right? Well, that re- and on that channel, not only do we post anywhere between three to five clips per episode, but then we'll also post 14 ish shorts. Mm-hmm. We use Opus, which is a, another AI tool. Now, granted, Opus is really good, but we they do also have some editing, so we do have to do like some minor tweaking, but you can do it all inside of Opus. But when it comes to if you are a filmmaker or a content creator and you're doing a podcast and you want to make a bunch of clips, Dude, Opus is where it is at. Absolutely. We use that. and It feels like free views. You know what's crazy? We use Opus and it's nuts because we, that channel, so the secondary channel, the uncensored channel, we started using that about two and a half, three months ago. And that channel grew to, right now I think it's at like 1,400 subscribers. Didn't you like, send me 15? Oh yeah, we hit fifteen. Fifteen hundred over, over yesterday. July. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so we just crossed fifteen hundred subscribers on that channel, and we did it in two and a half months. Yeah, starting from zero. Yeah, so from zero. insane the amount of growth that came from that channel so quickly. Uh, and I one hundred percent say that that was just to being able to just mass blast out content and then learn from it, and then see like, oh, this worked. We can use this, or this worked. We can use that. Uh, and so like that's been super helpful. Um, so yeah, so ChatGPT, Taja, uh, Opus. Mm-hmm. Um, while you think, yeah, I'll give people my number two. Uh, 
I use Autopod. So oh, I yes. do so many podcasts that oftentimes when you are able to do your own clean feed of each angle or wide shots or whatever, and you're able to record audio of every single person on the podcast, what used to take me hours now takes me minutes. Wow. Minutes. Like to literally cut back and forth in between different views and of the deal. Mind blowing. Uh, I'll pay for it every day. Every day that ends in Y because it saves me hours on podcasts. Yeah, I like uh, Hawk Vision. He actually has one. Um, the A I'm actually using is me right now. I'm actually not here. Um, I am AI. Sora AI. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got 20 fingers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can always check my fingers. That's how you know it's really me. That's, that's yeah. for now. Yeah. Um, and then Canva would be, not in third place, but Canva would be in there like, there are certain things that when clients ask you, hey, can you design this for me? Make a flyer, make a graphic, blah, 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 blah. In the past, I would spend hours trying to make something at a not a low budget, but at a small, smaller budget. And I would spend so much time trying to make something for them. And then they'd be like, oh, can we just change it? Or I was thinking actually this with Canva, I can send them 10 designs instantly. They pick the one that they like the best because they have a choice and they feel like they're choosing. Yeah. And it took me a few minutes when I need to make thumbnails, when I need to make uh, graphics, uh, and it's not a high, super high value project. Canva is gold. That That is a big one. I will tell you another one, and this is actually one that you and I discovered and then we started using it together mm -hmm. uh, for real estate clients. Ooh. But it is uh, 11 labs. But I'm going to give you a bonus point here. And this is one that I've been playing with the most recently because it just came out. Mm -hmm. But Artless mm. just came out with their very own uh, AI voice mm -hmm. creator. And is it good? Dude, it is really good. In comparison? It is better. Than 11? Than 11. I'm about to check it out. Here's the thing, though. It is limited on the number of voices. Okay. And they categorize their voices based off of types of content. So what it does, it does better than 11 Labs. It's just not quite as open, I think. But as far as I'm concerned, as, as just like someone who's actually trying to use an actual AI voice, because, you know, some of those AI voices, you can hear it. It gets kind yeah, of wonky, yeah. especially somewhere in the middle. Like, they have them broken up into categories on Artlist, and it is, like, I mean, it's amazing. Like, they have, like, a documentary yeah. one, and it literally sounds like... Sounds good. It's, like, this is a documentary or an explainer or, like, one where somebody sounds excited to tell you something, and that tone carries throughout every word. The tone never fluctuates uh -huh. like it does on 11 Labs. My only problem with 11 Labs is exactly what you're talking about. It starts off loud, and then it just tapers. Yes. And it gets so much. Anyways, Brandon put me onto this, Levin Labs. If you shoot real estate or anything that needs a VO that you're the person that you're doing the video for, they don't like being on camera. They don't like their voice. Real estate agents say this all the time. Yes. I don't like the sound of my voice. I don't want to be in front of the camera. Bro, uh, how much is Levin Labs? Like it's like maybe like ten, fifteen dollars a month. Yeah, something, something, like, something that. like that. Like you can go check it out, bro. Every single time I do a video voiceover, hopefully none of my clients are <laughs> watching this. I charge them fifty dollars, literally, to do a digital voice a VO voiceover. Fifty dollars every single video that I like. It's just money in your pocket. Yeah, money in your pocket. Yeah, I feel like charge more if you want to. But here's the thing, I. If I could be wrong here. I got to do a little bit of research, but I'm pretty sure if you already subscribe to Artlist, you already get the voices. Oh, that's dope. And they give you like so many credits that you can use. But like with 11 Labs, I kept finding that like I would do it and then I'd have to like redo it. So I'd use up more credits and then I'd be like, oh, that sounds weird in the middle. So I have to do the sliders and then yes. redo it. So you use up all these credits. Artlist, dude, I think unlimited? every single one of them. No, it's not unlimited. Okay. You have credits. Oh, okay. But the First time it spits it out, oh. it's good and it's 
pretty dang quick. I'm gonna check that out. So I would strongly recommend checking out that one. So that's that's been the one that I've been using um, a lot lately. Uh, just sort of testing it out. I'll I'm working on a video on it as well because I think it's I think it's game changer. Yes, I think it's absolute game changer. Yes, uh, I will agree on that fourth one. My fifth one is I like actually I'll split this because they kind of do the same thing, but captions and Descript. I use both for like when I want to take uh, a transcript of a video, I use Descript to throw into ChatGPT to analyze, to rewrite, to come up with titles, blah, 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 CEO or SEO, sorry, SEO, uh, categories, tags, keywords. I will literally use Descript just to be able to pull the transcription. But when I want to actually caption something, I will use captions. It's it's beautiful. That is a good one. Captions, yeah. the app, um, is so good. Mm -hmm. So good. Mm -hmm. And now that Apple, when the new iOS comes out, you can control your phone on your Mac. Oh, my gosh. Yes. I'm going to be using that so much more. Yes. Because um, their desktop app is a little iffy. Yeah. Yeah. It's You iffy. can tell they they focus on the, on the phone one. So, yeah, from a uh, practicality, especially for shorts, I will edit a, a short for a client on my computer. I'll airdrop it to my phone. I'll bring it into captions. I'll caption it, and I'll airdrop it back to my computer. Uh, I don't love the quality loss, mm -hmm. like, in terms of rendering out multiple times, but it's a short, so. It's all good. It's disposable. Yeah. All right, you ready for my fifth one? Yes. This is a tool. This is going to sound, it's not really a tool. Uh, I'm going to just use this opportunity to just say this last one. You ready? Mm -hmm. My fifth thing that I've been implementing into my business as a whole has actually been expanding the team to more people. Mm. In an age right now where there's like so much AI, and don't get me wrong, I am using a lot of AI tools and testing new AI tools every week. Um, recently, we have brought on a data analyst Mm -hmm. uh, we have brought on somebody to assist on like back end, like HR and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then we've also just brought on a, well, we're testing out another editor. Uh, and, te and I've been doing interviews with like editors, like just, it feels like about every week or so, bringing on more editors. And so right now, although yes, there are a lot of AI tools, one thing I will say is like you should never underappreciate the value of people mm -hmm. and because where all these AI tools are great, um, they are all still just redoing something that a human already did. And I personally believe that like the one thing we could lose throughout this AI revolution that's coming is the, uh, is an original thought, the value of an original thought. Mm -hmm. And so I, at this point, although most like, like for example, Travis, our, our lead editor right now, he does edit a lot of stuff like from scratch. He's also using AI tools himself, but I like having a person mm -hmm. look at what the AI is doing and make some micro changes here and there. And so the same thing with like, you know, our data analyst, she is going to be using AI tools to help her analyze the data better, but I still would rather have a person do it than me just have like an AI tool that just spits out an answer because there's certain nuances that AI just can't figure out. You know, like, for example, if a video goes out and it underperforms, the, da the data may say, oh, this video underperformed. But we know as people, well, the debate was last night. Mm -hmm. That took over the Internet. Yeah. So that's why our video underperformed. It wasn't because it wasn't good. It's just like we can we can see further steps ahead than just what an AI, you know, an AI bot can. 100%. So I would say right now, especially even in this world of crazy AI stuff, if you can still implement people, work with people, collaborate with people, shoot content with other people, you're going to make better stuff than just using AI, but still use AI because it's, it's uh, really freaking good. Use people while you still can. <laughs> what do you think? There's going to be no people going forward. <laughs> Everyone will be AI. <laughs>